Welcome to WKT's Backstage. I'm your host, Sissy Thompson. On today's show, we are speaking with WKT's still North American champion, Miss Nikki Suyama, fresh out of battle. We're going to be having a little tea with Leave and Crystal. And then our big interview is with WKT's own Masters World Champion, Bob Owens. And we also have a special announcement to be made from World Karaoke Tour's own commissioner, Mr. Whitney John Stewart. So y'all pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let's go backstage. <laughs> joined me for another sweet episode and we have got some amazing fun for you guys today i was just sitting here do y'all notice i got a little bit of extra shine in my hair i know right well i went to the beauty supply store and they've got this hairspray and it's great for shiny hair and virtually shiny hair so it's kind of if y'all need some sunglasses i'm sorry but I just love it. And if you'd like to know what kind of hairspray it is, I'm not going to reveal what it is, but you can message me and I will tell you because it is fantastic and I love it. So, because I wanted my hair to look good because let me tell you what I've been doing this week. And I said to myself, I'm going to fill you guys in. And I know some of you know this, but some of you may not. I have been uh, creating my reel for the year, singing the national anthem. The season is here people um you've got all kinds of um civic clubs and and veterans clubs and and all of them including um your big sporting franchises such as the nfl they are now beginning to hold auditions for their upcoming games and for their halftime show as well as the beginning where the person comes out on the field and does the national anthem so make sure that you take the time to reach out to all of these clubs, submit a video of yourself singing the national anthem, and go to all of the sporting franchises' websites, click, and just needle through the menu, and you'll find it. Each, each franchise is different, but um, find the information and send the videos, because I will tell you this, when I lived in Florida, I was on the roster for the national anthem for all of the Eagles clubs, like I said, all of these things, all of these clubs, civic, patriotic, veterans, anything, they have a roster that they pull from. So every holiday I was booked and it's really a great way to be involved in your community, in the sporting franchises that you love, and also get yourself out there and make a little bit of money on the side as well. So if you'd like more information about that, hit me up here at worldkaraokeetour.com slash backstage, and I'll definitely fill you in on that. And um, yeah, promote yourself. Ain't nobody else gonna do it for you, right? Anyway, Lord, let's get started. Let's go on over to the news. All right, here we are at the news. Here in just a few moments, I'm gonna be talking to Nikki Suyama. She just came out of the battle with the newly crowned Keep On Singing champion, Justin Wong, and they battled it out. But in the end, Nikki was able to hold on to that belt as the North American champion. But first, right here at the top of the gate, we have some important news and a major announcement from World Karaoke Tour's own commissioner, Mr. Whitney John Stewart. How are you doing today, Whitney? I hear you've got a, some really exciting news for us. Uh, we, we definitely do. First off, thank you, Sissy, so much for being a part of the North American title uh, sing-off between Nikki and Justin. Uh, so glad to have you along for the ride with the color commentary. You guys, uh, you really helped set the uh, stage for that battle. And we had such uh, amazing response from so many people from around the world. They thoroughly enjoyed that sing-off, and uh, you were a big part of that. So thank you so much for being a part of the uh, the telecast. But with that being said, that is in the books. We are moving forward, and we're well, like I said, we're still prepping for our 2021 season. We've got a, some amazing tournaments coming up. But next in the rotation for title defenses is our world champion, Miriam Kim. 
And the way things work on the on the World Karaoke Tour is, yes, we have our tournaments and you can win tournaments, but we also have our big title belts, kind of like in boxing or, or pro wrestling. You know, we, we figure out who's the best person to uh, challenge for those belts and we, we put on our sing-offs. And uh, in thinking about the best person to challenge Miriam for the title, I came up with an idea and we're going to move forward with it because I think it's going to be quite interesting to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, announcing for the first time right here on Backstage, we're going to have ourselves the very first ever WKT World Title Eliminator Tournament. And what that is going to be is a 16-person single elimination tournament with the winner going on to challenge Miriam Kim for the world championships this spring. So what I want every singer who thinks that they have what it takes to challenge Miriam to go to worldkaraoketour.com right now because it is available on our website right now. You can sign up and be part of this single elimination tournament. We're going to take 16 singers. They're going to advance into uh, this single elimination tournament and whoever the champion is will have a 100% guaranteed shot at Miriam Kim and the world title. Well, again, you have surprised us with something completely out of the box. And I just have a piece of advice for those 16 people. You better work hard because Miriam, she's going to do everything it takes to keep that title. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. So please, best of the best. Bring your best because Miriam Kim will be ready for you. So anyway, I just want to say thanks, uh, everybody. Thank you, Sissy, for uh, letting me have some time on your show today. Enjoy the rest of it, and uh, I'll talk to everybody later. If you were watching the battle at the tail end of this week, you saw some amazing talent. We had Justin Wong battling against our champ, Nikki Suyama, and what a tight battle it was, but our champ prevailed, and she is with us today. How you doing, champ? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. I'm going to tell you what, that was the show to watch this week. How do you feel? Oh, I feel I feel really good, but the, immediately afterwards, I felt a, a huge sense of relief because no matter how many times I do these challenges, it really doesn't get any easier. And it, it whew, I'm nervous the entire way through, and every single time, it's it's a hard battle to the end, and especially this one. So I'm relieved, but also very happy and Absolutely. excited to hold the title. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you know, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed watching Justin. You know, what a formidable competitor for you. I mean, he definitely brought his game. You know, he came out of strong uh, uh, as a strong uh, competitor, being coached by Brian Scott and keep on singing. And he did not disappoint, but nor did you. And I have to tell you, you looked beautiful throughout the whole competition. Um, I loved your song choices, but I got to tell you what, and you know what I'm fixing to say, because you heard me say it. That Jackson 5 song, man, I was jamming. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about the song selection for that. So Michael Jackson, pre-documentary, was my favorite, my favorite artist of all time since I was a kid. I have loved everything he's done since the start of the Jackson 5 till the end of his career. And... Um, yeah, the Jackson 5, so so singing along to, to adult Michael is different. It's in a lower range. It's not super impressive for me to right. sing. So so when it came, you know, competition time, when I started getting into these competitions, I really started going towards Jackson 5 because, one, the, it's they all soul, right? All of their songs are just soul. And little Michael could emote these stories. You know, he had never been in love, I don't think, at like 11, right? But... <laughs> He sang with so much soul, and I was like, I want to do that. And so I started learning Jackson 5 songs because they are in a stupid high range. And that's kind of where where I sit, well, well, where I did sit before I started not taking care of my throat. But uh, yeah, and so I, you know, I was like, man, little Mike, get up there. Let me get up there. And then, yeah, that uh, Who's Loving You just became one of my favorite songs. And it has been through the years. Every now and then I like to drop it in these competitions 
uh, when I can do it. Cause it's a hard song. My voice can't always do it. Sometimes I got to drop it down one. And even then sometimes I just can't, can't make it through, but this time I did. <laughs> I was really, yes. really happy about it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I was like, when I heard it kick off, I'm like, this ain't no easy jam. I mean, it is not. And man, you just took it back. And like I always say, you Nikki eyes it a little bit and it was just rocking. And, and I'm going to tell you, I encourage you continue checking out those Motown, Motown songs because if anybody's got the soul to give it what it needs, you sure do. We are all so proud of you. You know, both you and Justin just really entertained us and brought the talent. Um, so let me ask you this. What's on the horizon for our champ for the remainder of the season? What are you looking to do? So I am going to be participating in the Eliminator challenge that's happening here soon i'm going i'm going for both belts i'm going for the world title hashtag two belt nikki <laughs> why not I'm, I'm i'm taking it all the way i'm and and I, not only do i want the two belts but this is my third challenge for the north american belt right i can't i can't keep it forever but if i can't keep this one forever why not go why not go for the big one <laughs> all right so that puts you into into the comp with uh 16 other people and you're going after and if you make it through that then you you'll be going head to head with miriam and what a battle that's going to be oh yeah i miriam is amazing and she's a very seasoned competitor she knows what she's doing she knows how to play the game you know that's that's all my that's all my whole thing is like i know how to play the game but miriam knows so that's it's yeah it's gonna be another crazy battle but they're they're all like that I each person I go against is so is so different you know so it's 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 scary and exciting and challenging all at the same time every single person and Miriam is gonna be no different she's yeah. incredible so <sighs> well <laughs> I tell you for me Yes, you certainly do. But if I know you, you've probably already started listening to some songs, tuning up some of your older stuff. And you know what? That's how we learn. You know, you continue to challenge yourself. And I've definitely watched you through, my gosh, over 500 days now, you have been the North American champ. So we've watched you go in these battles and each time you get better and better and better. And that's a testament to you, young lady. You definitely challenge yourself. You don't take the easy way out. And we are so proud of you. Oh, thank you. That really means a lot coming from you. I really appreciate yeah. that. It, We're it very is. proud it's of hard. you, most definitely. <laughs> you. And I'm serious about what I said. I would love to hear uh, you and Justin try something together. I think you guys would pair off each other very nicely. So uh, maybe maybe you guys do, do that. Maybe I've got some song suggestions for that. Who knows? Yes. Listen, I want to say thanks for coming by to visit with me again. You know, you're my girl. I love you so much. If you need anything, reach out to me. If not, we're going to be looking for you, going for that <laughs> title. Ooh, thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, I'm always willing to come on this show with you. <laughs> Absolutely, honey. We'll talk to you soon. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Welcome to Tea Time. 
Today, I have brought two young ladies that I had the pleasure of getting to know and meet during our tenure with Keep On Singing. I would like to welcome these two good-looking, talented ladies to my left and to my right. Give it up for Crystal and Lee. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Oh, doing great. You know, before we go any further, I think we need to take care of some deputies. WKT business. Um, it has come to my attention that during the process and filming of Keep On Singing that we have been mispronunciating our fabulous friend's name. It was Leave, not Live. That's correct, right, Leave? Yes, that is correct. And why didn't you say anything? Uh I mean, to be honest, I was a little bit nervous uh, during the first episode, and uh, I didn't even notice it until we finished filming, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I should have corrected them. <laughs> and then since I didn't, I thought it would be weird for, like, subsequent tapings to, like, all of a sudden, like, yeah, so I just didn't say anything. Well, absolutely. I understand that. Well, we definitely wanted to get all that straight because we're beginning our fantastic 2021 season and we are all looking forward to seeing both of you competing this year. So we definitely want to get that name straightened out. You know, I brought you guys on here because, like I said, got to know you both through Keep On Singing. And one thing that always managed to not only catch my ear because you both are fantastic vocalists but you also caught my eye was just how amazing your videos were you both had a different style vocally and your videos were different but they were both so visually appealing i want to start out with leave a little bit leave tell us a little bit about how you came up with concepts for your videos all those different angles give some people some advice on how to jazz up the virtual stage uh, I mean, really, I can't, uh, I can't really take credit for it. Uh, it was my friend Henrik. Uh, he was sort of the, the brains uh, and the artistic vision behind uh, the videos. And yeah, I just, you know, um, I just went over to his place once a week and because he had a microphone and some colored lights that he could uh, set up for me and I just gave him my phone and I was like, here's the record button, do your thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's an amateur photographer and he's been around the karaoke scene. You know, I met him 20 years ago. Right, <laughs> when right. He was, when he was hosting karaoke. So like, you know, like he, he, he knows how to, you know, how to make it fun and interesting. And, um, and so it was, it was great. And plus, you know, like we've been in lockdown and so it was nice to have an excuse to see my friend once a week and, you know, and then we'd have tea afterwards and I'd bring Oh yeah. That's a great idea. So you guys hear that. I would encourage you guys, if you've got friends, you've got sisters, brothers that definitely have an eye for photography, for videography. I mean, that's a great idea. Get people involved because go back and look at Leaves videos. I mean, the angles were really cool. I mean, every song, you just took us on a totally different journey and it was amazing. And then we have Miss Crystal. Crystal, I was her vocal coach. She was on my team and she had a little bit of a country flair, but then she came in and we had different genres every week. And tell us a little bit about to the, the method of your madness of how you created just some classy, beautiful videos, Crystal. Well, it definitely was a roller coaster. I, I started out with just a, a I used a, one of those flashlights that kind of you can bend the angle of the light so that it was projecting onto me. And then I learned that ring lights are your friend. I've seen your ring light I've seen, and you use it. I'm like, I need a ring light. So then I just I when it came to a concept for a video, I would go look at the originals and go. I kind of wore this something like this well what if right. I put this kind of a background and then this lovely fabric here was part of a costume so you don't even have to sink money into it it's just remnant fabric laying around anything can be a background Oh, yeah. And I know you and I have talked about this even right before we started taping. I love the look of velvet uh, in combination with the ring lights because it creates, gives you texture. It gives you luminescence. I mean, it's just variegated shades and it looks amazing. And like I've always said, you've just got 
a gorgeous set of peepers on you. Your eyes are stunning. And, and that's one thing that I've always complimented you as well as the judges, the way that you would sing your song and, and not only work on the set itself, but also your body language, but your eye language. Give us, a, a, I mean, how do you practice that? Would you definitely, when you were practicing your songs, were you just completely trying to also choreograph your body and your eyes to the music? I was trying to. I, I used to, I'm a very timid person, as you know, okay. and being in front of a camera is not something that I do on a regular basis. So I said, you must connect with that camera. You act right. like it's somebody in the room with you. Best way I can put it. <laughs> That's right. And, and I remember when we would be coaching, and I remember this piece of advice from one of my favorite movies, Coal Miner's Daughter, Loretta Lynn's story. And I remember her husband, they were at a recording studio and she was having a hard time singing. And he said, baby, just picture that our children are in the room when you sing. And you remember me telling you that. Let's go over to Liv. Liv, I remember, man, the way that you would take us on those journeys with those songs, especially that final number of yours. And just the way that your emotional um phrasing would take us on the journey how do you prepare for that um I mean that that was really a, a big thing that I I wanted to work on uh in this in you know in keep on singing um because you know up to that point you know I'd just been doing like oh you know go out to the bar have a few drinks sing some karaoke the louder you scream the better everyone likes it it's great it's awesome um, so, you know, sort of pulling back a little bit and getting to really, um, you know, connect emotionally with the songs was, you know, was, was something that I, I knew that I needed to work on and I tried to be really intentional with it. Um, and especially that last song, you know, I mentioned this a little bit, uh, you know, when we filmed, uh, the interview, uh, during Keep On Singing, um, but it was, I filmed it on my birthday uh, and that was intentional. Um, and it, just because this, you know, this past year, you know, has been a doozy for everyone. Uh, and, and I, you know, was no exception. Um, you know, there were family things going on and, you know, just life stuff. And also it was just sort of like, you know, when you hit that certain age and you realize that life is too short to, you know, to, to be small, right? <laughs> you know, to make yourself go, small. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Yeah. yeah, and um, and just you know, it was just a lot of gratitude towards you know the my friends and my family who've you know who really stood by me. Right. And, right. And and actually, I didn't I didn't practice that song. Um, I listened to it a lot uh, in the week before. Um, I. I recorded it, um, but I didn't practice it because I wanted, I wanted it to be genuine, and I knew that if I sang it too many times, right, I wouldn't be able to keep that emotion. And so, uh, I went over to Henrix, like I always do, and uh, and I just, you know, I asked him, like, can I just sit quietly with a cup of tea and do some journaling, um, and just, you know, and I and I wrote in my journal, I wrote the lyrics, you know, I just hand wrote them just so that I could really think about them and get into it. Um, and then, you know, we, we hit the record button and the first song was the, the first time that I had actually sung it. And, you know, and it was a little like, oh, you know, a little, oh, a little jolty because I was like, oh yeah, I need to breathe here. And, you know, like this, okay. Uh, and then the second time we recorded it, uh, I broke down in tears and it was just like a crying mess, uh, like halfway through. And I like, but I was like, I'm going to finish this. And he was like, wow, you really got the emotion on that one. <laughs> and he's well, like, unfortunately, I, I accidentally stopped recording three seconds in. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what the finished product that you gave to us was just as, as I've told you, 
um, is definitely one of the highlights for me um, for the whole Keep On Singing journey. I just loved it. Um, I remember Crystal's very first song that she did was definitely a highlight for me. And, and that was even before she and I really worked together. Um, so both of you definitely brought two pieces of music that I personally will always carry with me in my heart. And it definitely um, came at a good time for me. And I just wanna say to both of you, keep doing what you're doing. I'm really excited to see you, see you guys again. I'm excited to see you on the competition circuit this season. And I hope definitely that you guys will be back on the show because we're going to need some more tips. Some contestants are going to need some tips because it looks like we're going to be on the virtual stage for just a little while longer. And I tell you what, with people like you and creative minds like you, I definitely know that people are going to be reaching out to you guys for helpful hints. So definitely keep definitely doing all the stuff that you do um it's 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 fun to watch i love you guys both so much thanks for being on the show with me i hope to see you both real soon and if you guys need anything give me a call okay thank you thank you love you both bye bye now bye. i am so excited about my big interview today um, met this guy back in 2016 uh, at one of our karaoke joints here in Columbus, Ohio. And um, from that moment on, he came on board. Michael and I were directing um, the karaoke world championships here in Columbus. And he came on board, made our team, and we went to Vegas. And ever since then, his wife and himself have been our dearest friends. Welcome, Mr. Bob Owens, the World Karaoke Tours Master World Champion. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, sis? I'm fine. You didn't have to drive all the way from Alabama to Columbus for the interview today. But well, I you know, I it. would have liked to just drawn it across town and, and been there <laughs> with you right in the same room. But we're having the Easter thing today. And so the family's all here at my sister's. Oh, and, that's uh, right. Well, Bob still has family here. His mom, how old's your mom? Mom is 87. And, and I'm going to tell you what, Miss Owens is a fire cracker. She's just the tiniest, petitest little lady you'd ever see. But I'm going to tell you what, she is a firecracker, isn't she, Bob? Oh, she is. You know, my mom was a pastor's wife for 50 some years. And, you know, that's where we really began in music. Mom was really, real strong and, you know, in the choir and led choirs and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, she was, she was a pistol, man. She had to whip that choir in shape. Well, I knew being your mama, she had to put up with a buttload of stuff. So she had to be, she had to be sparky. I'm telling you right now, because you're trouble with a capital C. Trouble oh, with yeah. a capital C. Well, my brother is trouble. He uh, is. I've met him too, but he does it a little bit more quietly than you. He's, he's uh, under the radar, a little bit more under the radar, but yeah, um, yeah met, met Bob and, and just uh, fell in love with him and his sweetheart. Um, tell everybody uh, a little bit about how you and Paige met. I've always thought this was just a great story. I thought me and Michael had a great love story, but you guys have an amazing love story too. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, we moved from Indiana to Alabama when I was uh, the beginning of my junior year in high school. And so I went from this big school in Indiana to this little tiny school in, in just backwoods, Alabama. Well, she happened to be one of the cheerleaders there, you know. And I always tell everybody, you know, she was up here and I was way down here. And so uh, we moved away in the middle of my senior year. And, uh, but I always... You know, she was the cutest girl in all the school. You know, she was just adorable. And, uh, but, you know, I just, I knew I just never had a chance with her. But I, but I sat by her in every class. I flirted with her like crazy, you know, and I just, I just <laughs> teased her all the time. I was relentless. And so, um, so, you know, we would write notes and that kind of stuff, you know, nothing really romantic. We never dated. And uh, so um, we moved away. And so on our 40th class reunion, uh, we reconnected. And so I went to the class reunion and I really didn't spend a lot of time with her there because, you know, she had these people around her and I had people around me until the last night. And then we sat up and talked to about six in the morning 
And then we began to talk back and forth. And then we began to drive back and forth from Alabama. So it wasn't long. So I, I proposed and she accepted. And so she, she asked me, she said, when did you, when did you first ask me to marry you? And I said, and I told her the date and she says, no, she said in my, her senior memories book, it said, it said, dear Paige, uh, cause we had these memory books, you know, you write in and you write little right. things to people, you know? And so she said, I, I wrote dear Paige, I'm not going to tell you how beautiful you are, how smart you are, how wonderful you are, because everybody's going to tell you that. All I'm going to say to you is uh, have a great life and run off with me and marry me. I wrote that, <laughs> I wrote that in 1973, you know, 40 years before we got married. So, um, uh, but that was, uh, that was pretty incredible. Oh my gosh. I've always loved that story. Always loved that story. And if you've guys, if you've never, ever met Paige at, at any of the live shows in Vegas, she is just a hoot. And, you know, we met Bob and then Paige was just icing on the cake. And I had just moved up here from the South and she's an Alabama girl and we just connected and we are Thelma and Louise and we have so much fun when we're together. We were actually, we have a, a venue here, unfortunately, that is closed down thanks to COVID that was called Tequila Cowboys. And there was a karaoke place that was attached to that called Wannabes. <clears throat> That's actually uh, the place where we met Bob. We were in competition, uh, Columbus, So You Think You've Got Talent, and it was at one of the qualifiers. And y'all all know, I mean, Bob's a formidable opponent, and, you know, through the world <laughs> karaoke, well, you know where I'm going with this, so just flow with it. It's my show. Make me look good, at least for this moment in time. Okay, well, you know, when he and I came up against each other at the World Masters Champion, whatever he beat me you know but not by much not by much and you said when you saw my video what did you say uh, can i say that on camera i said oh, I'll, I'll i'll paraphrase oh crap <laughs> she is she's swinging for the fence she's coming at me with everything she's got i was, <laughs> man, I, would, I, was. I wouldn't expect any less right Oh my gosh, I had worked so hard and I had reached out to Brian Scott and I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? You know him, you know me. And he's like, you just better sing your butt off. That's all I know. Oh, you did. <laughs> oh my gosh, but you did such a great job. But I want everybody to know now I'm announcing that I have beat Bob Owens before. Yes, I have. Yeah. I have. I have beat him before. See, what happened was we were at the competition. And at that point, it was audience applause, audience applause. Right. So Bob's right. over there just sitting down. Well, y'all know me. Yes, you do. I am a hustler. I am a businesswoman. And you tell him what I did, Bobo. She was next door to, a, to Tequila Cowboys and she gets a, a, uh, a bridal group that is having a, a what do they call it a bachelorette uh, party. A bachelorette party. She pays them, buys them drinks to come over and vote for her with applause. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I had three people there, and she has a whole dadgum bar. They're the uh, you know quadra. Yeah, that's how Funny. I got beat. That is how a boss rolls. So any of you major <laughs> Fortune 500 companies that are listing right now that would like for me to send in my resume, you can contact me at World Karaoke Tour for sure. But anyway, yeah, I've never let him forget that because I tell you what, since then, I've been running my tail off trying to beat this talented fella. It's no secret, Bob, you just are the voice. And I absolutely love everything about your vocal ability. I love your tone. I love your phrasing. I love the way if you see a note, you attack it. And um, it's, it's truly become, I feel, your trademark. Um, you definitely give everybody a run for their money. Every competition that I've ever seen you in, I mean, you are right there. Um, we took him to Vegas the first year. He was uh, the bronze medalist for the nation. And then again, came back the following year. And again, right up there on the stage, just nailing hit after hit and everybody just falling in love with you. I want to tell you something. One thing that I think that connected you and I from the very beginning 
um, not only our humor, we have a similar humor, but um, definitely uh, you, like myself, we grew up uh, in the church. And definitely our love for music, for sure, stems from uh, a foundation of our faith. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, as you know, and maybe some people who are watching know, you know, I pastored a church for 30 years. And before that, I was in church work for 10 years, you know, doing uh, leading choirs and uh, that kind of thing. And I grew up in church. So, you know, music was always my part of the contribution of a service or, or whatever. And so, you know, we, the church is a wonderful training ground for singers because, you know, you, you learn vocal skills, you, you learn how to sing. And we say in the church, you know, you, if they don't cry, you don't sing, you have to be effective. Right. And that's what, then that's one of the things I think really it trains you to do is to, uh, especially when you step out in the secular world and singing away from the church, you learn in the church how, you know, how to affect people with mm -hmm. your, your voice, with your song selection. And, and that's what you, that's really what drives you. You know, I was three years old when I first sang and, you know, I got such an applause from the congregation and you know, I got so many amens, I was bit. You know, I, I was I was ruined from that point. And I remember the second Sunday we went back after the first Sunday I sang, I went back and I was upset because they didn't ask me to sing again. I felt like <laughs> you know, they did ask me to sing every Sunday, you know. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I thought I was the star for now on. But you know, I'm, they're not gonna have a good service today because I'm not singing, right? I'm three years old. <laughs> So, so, you know, I, I become a diva, but, uh, but, you know, singing in church really, really uh, does something for you that uh, a lot of secular singers or people trying to sing secular music don't have. And right. also it trains you song selection and, you know, in any competition, song selection is so important. Absolutely. And, and we, we are singer singers, whereas you know, guys in bands or they, they are singing with, with uh, instrumental music. They, you know, they, like us, if there's a gap in the song, if there's a bridge, if there's a long instrumental, we do runs. You know, we, we'll right. throw some things in there in between. Because uh, we'll in, hook... in church, we don't have no long instrumentals. I mean, we're oh, either doing a oh. prayer or we're doing offering or something. Something's right. filling that That's time right. slot. That's right. There's no dead air time somebody's got something going all the time so you know and you learn you learn to throw things in you learn to do runs you learn to th do hooks you learn to to do all the tricks and that's really you know gives gives you an upper hand well and and i know you and i have had long conversations about this you know and as you as you are rooted into the church and you begin to grow you know from a young and being in sunday school choirs and youth choirs you know, then the message of the song starts to take hold of your heart. Right. And um, and you begin to connect with that music. And and that's when, if you're open to it, and if you're open to, as, as we would say in the church, open for the spirit to lead, to me, uh, that's when I began to really see the effect that what I had to say and what I had to sing, if it affects me, then maybe I can affect somebody else, like you just said, you know, yeah. and, and minister to people. And so you said something a while ago that I thought was very interesting, you know, going from this, the, the church into the secular world of music or karaoke, here we are, you know, how has that, obviously it's helped you with your song selection. And, and you and I've talked about it. I mean, there are, there are songs that are that are out there that obviously I'm not going to choose because you know right. of it's, right. it's my choice and I don't connect with it and I'm right. I'm necessarily not going to promote a certain song that I don't agree with or doesn't fit you know what I'm trying to say. Tell us a little bit about how you approach that and how you have used um, your foundation of faith in the church to kind of help you with your secular music. Well, you know, Steve Mendez said something one time at Bethel Road, you know, where we, where we used to go sing every now and then. 
Right. He said, and he told me, he said, you, you never, he said, Bob, you always sing a song that has meaning. And I said, why would I sing anything else? Right. You know, it, 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 you know, you're, that's part of who I am and part of who you are is to, to select music that has a message. And it doesn't have to be about God or doesn't have to be about Christ or doesn't have to be about some theology, but it does have to have some kind of spiritual uh, input. And so when you, when we, uh, when we pick a song out, especially like when we went to Vegas, you know, uh, your big songs, especially the last songs that you, you choose, um, are songs that you want to hit a note right. and people. And I think that the meaning of the song is, is just as important as the scale and the, the, the height of the note that you reach. And we talk a lot about that. And you, we have Let, talked about that. Right. Let's talk a little bit. I want to delve into that just a little bit more before we move on. Um, let's talk about uh, Bridge. Or at, yeah. for everybody else, bridge over tr troubled water. You know, we right. were getting ready to uh, go to Vegas that year, and um, song selection is always, like Bob said, such a big part of what we did. And and when we were getting him ready to go to Vegas, and he was working on his songs, um, I brought this song to him, and we were at Bethel that night, and it yes. was the first time that I had ever ever heard him sing it. And I said. Oh my gosh. Let's talk a little bit about that, what you did in Vegas and how you kind of pulled the audience in to what you were trying to say, almost like a message through song. Right. So uh, we were at Bethel one night. And so Sissy said, I want you to sing this song. And I said, eh, I don't know. You know, it, it doesn't have a lot of range in it. It doesn't have, I, there's nothing much I can do with it. It's pretty much straight up and down. And so, um, I sang it and, and, you know, her and Michael and, and LePage all said, you got to sing this song. And I said, I ain't, I'm just not feeling it. And they said, so, and I remember I was going to do, I was going to do, if you remember, New York State of Mind, Billy Joel, yes. which I do very well. And yes, you I, do. You know, and I, and I, everywhere I go, people want me to sing that. But I was like, man, I, I am just not feeling it. And they said, you got, you have to put that in your song selections and, and you got to put it at the end where you know if you make it to the championship or whatever you got to put it there so i'm wrestling with it and i said okay i'm gonna do it because you know because it's important to me and i think it's important to every singer to listen uh to to other people and you know i mean you know what you can sing and i know what i can sing but sometimes it's important for us to get an opinion and to, to you know to fix certain things so well, anyway. and, and don't and don't let him fool you he listened to his wife is who he listened to <laughs> <laughs> no she i listened loved to it. you as well so and so but and they she did and you guys loved it and so anyway i'm still not feeling it i get to vegas i'm doing my songs and let me just say this uh after the first day i was like oh crap i mean the singers the quality singers at that level are just crazy right and i'm gonna i'm gonna say this all the all you guys doing virtual you you ain't saying nothing to you wait till we go live stage. wait till we go back to live when you go live you get back on the stage it you better better wear your big boy pants because it's, gonna, it's gonna <laughs> wait till we go here. live that's right so uh anyway so i got to vegas I was getting ready to sing my song, and anybody knows me, I always rest before I sing. I relax, right? right? That's that's just what I do. And if I'm if I was singing a concert like the other day, I sang a concert uh, with my brother and my best friend. We have a band, and I and so they said, "What well, you want to practice?" I said, "No, we're not practicing today. We're going to rest." I always do that. Um, so that I'm fresh and so I'm not just wore out. But anyway, so I go up to the room and I literally fell asleep. And uh, I, I think that you guys almost had to send somebody up after me. Yes, but, we did. But, you know, but if anybody knows what I do, you know, I learned this in church, I always try to put a hook in a song. And That's what I mean right. by a hook, 
I try to put something that's going to stand out and and grab the, the listener and something that's going to draw them in, right? So really in Bridge, there's no place other than one little place, and it's between the second course and the third verse. There's a there's an instrumental in there. So I be, right before, I didn't know, right before Silver Girl. So yeah, and, and, you know, uh, uh, I can't remember how the words go now. Uh, Say along, yeah, Silver. Silver Girl. But anyway, <laughs> sail on, Silver Girl. Sail on by. Right. So I right. so before I hit sail on, Silver Girl, uh, there was a long instrumental. So I I pulled a little preaching in there. So I just said. So I I looked at the crowd and I said, and this came to me just literally while I was napping. And, and I thought, do, uh, just say, uh, does anybody know the bridge over troubled water? Lift your hand. And I stole that from, from, uh, from the voice. Uh, uh, Kaylin Jade did that one night. Lift your hand, you know, she's singing, let it be. So anyway, so I, I, I said, does anybody know the, the bridge over troubled water? Lift your hand if you know the bridge over troubled water. And man, the crowd went crazy. Yes, so they did. I, yeah. I'm getting goosebumps so, right now. Yeah. So when I came in, sail on Silver Girl, it's kind of it's kind of strange how the back background vocals come in. So to hit that, you had to hit it perfectly. So I thought I can't take a chance on not hitting it perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to back up the backup singers. I'm going to echo what they say. So they said, sell on Silver Girl. And then I come back, sell on Silver Girl. They sell yeah, on by, sell on by. Your time. Then I come in with them. Your time has come to die. All your dreams are on the way. You know, it was so I came perfect. In on that. It was perfect. And so when I come to the court, to the last, the last line, and, and you know, uh, uh, just look behind, uh, and, you know, and so then I, I came to the end, and instead of just stopping with it, I just added to it, and then I took, uh, uh, I did a special vibrato on that very last note, and I held it, gosh, I don't know, a Forever. long time. Forever. Probably, <laughs> probably four full measures, something like that, you know, uh, but, which being a trumpet player, I can do, but right. I held that note, I held that note probably four, five measures. And man, it was awesome. It was a moment. Well, and, and you took took a song that we have heard in competition and you definitely made it your own. And I always say this to people, if you take a song that's fairly well known and make me forget who the original singer was, right. then you've done something. And very few people do that for me. Jeffrey has done that for me. You have done that for me. Um, Miriam, Nikki, Justin Wong, so many people have done that for me throughout my karaoke uh, experience. And I'll never forget that moment. I will never, ever, ever forget that moment um, in Vegas. It was definitely something that's just always in my memory. Um, having said all that, here you are now, fast forward a few years, the pandemic has, has definitely changed all of our normal um, performing routines. We're here on the virtual stage. Um, I've enjoyed being a part of a team with you throughout this pandemic, all of that. And then it just culminated into winning the World Karaoke Tours Masters Championship. What does that feel like after everything that you've done? And then finally, you clinch a world title. Well, it's kind of surreal, you know, I mean, to be able to, to get that kind of a title. Um, after, you know, and I have not done karaoke nearly as long as a lot of other people, you know, I, and I'm, I'm, you know, I call myself the old man, you know, I'm old enough to be a lot of his grandfather, but, uh, but to be able to, to compete on that level, uh, at this stage of my life is, is, is very exciting. And I'm wow. very honored, I'm very honored to be able to, uh, to take that title. And uh, and it, it was amazing to me is are the people who watched the competition and who have reached out to me and the acknowledgement that I've got 
in in Alabama uh, in places. I mean, I I I never sing hardly in a, in a karaoke place anymore. That the KJ does announce the crowd. Here is the world, international, you know, masters champion. You know, and it's 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 very humbling, but uh, but it's very rewarding too. You know. Uh, well, it, it definitely is. And it, it's karaoke has definitely and, and again, getting back to, you know, our roots in the church has definitely taken us into some places that, you know, a lot of people from that spiritual side, you know, might have a lot to say. And, and you and I've talked about this, you know, in right. private and um, and and I'm glad that we share the same feeling on it. You know, I've I've often said, you know, I, I come in contact with people of 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 different walks of life from all of us, but my faith teaches me that I am to love one another and right. let my heavenly father do his job. I'm not the judge. And, right. um, and I find sometime, and again, I'm not perfect. You know, I've made mistakes. We all do. None of us are perfect, but um, I've, I've often looked at, you know, this karaoke world that I can be in as often like, my own little ministry to connect with people. And we were talking earlier and you said something um, about how it, it builds relationships. And I just love that. Give me just a little bit of forethought on how you feel about that. Well, you know, whether you're in church or any other uh, setting, uh, you know, it's about relationship. You know, it, 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 karaoke is a culture within itself. Yes. And, and so, I mean, I, you know, we have friends and we have comrades uh, all over the country. And I, went, I was in Little Rock and, and, and I was in Little Rock the, uh, not long ago. I was on my way to Dallas. We stayed the night in, in Arkansas and I found a little karaoke place. Well, I sang there and the word is getting out that I'm there. And I'm getting texts from people that I competed with in Vegas. And man, why you tell me you were coming into town? But, but I might have something to do with that. Uh, maybe, yeah, the minute yeah, we posted that you were in Little Rock singing, life. everybody's going yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but anyway, but relationships are are vital, whether it's in yeah. a church or, or whatever social gathering. That's what it's all about. And and you know when you you know, everyone has a spiritual side, whether you like it or not. There's a spiritual connection, right? Um, in 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 seminary, they, you know, there's one theory that you are a trichotomy. You're a body, soul, and spirit. So you are. There's a spiritual being within you. So you know, uh, without getting too deep, that that spiritual that person longs for relationships to oh, make yes. you whole. so mm -hmm. so you know you find that connection and and uh you know i've i've built more relationships doing karaoke in the past two years in, in alabama since i moved to alabama two years ago right. than i have anywhere else even in right. even in the even in the church i'm going to right um, I, I, they don't even know who I am. Very few might, but I can go in any karaoke bar, any place in Huntsville, Alabama, or Decatur, or Athens, or any of or the Columbus. surrounding area, or Columbus, without somebody you know, going, "It's Bob. He's here." You know, and I mean, you know, it's kind of like, "Hey, Norm," you know, from Cheers. <laughs> uh, but but it's uh, it's it's nice to have, it's nice to be acknowledged, and it's nice to Absolutely. know that there are people. Who it's nice to know there are people who care, and it's nice to know that you care about other people. Absolutely, and, 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 it, and it's so much fun. You and I have talked about it even just with our relationships with Michael and Paige, how much n nicer it is to be with somebody that enjoys what you do. And, and the same thing with the people in our karaoke circles. You know, you, it's, it's like that old meme that says, you know, you find weirdos just like you. And, um, right. and we have such a great time whenever uh, we spend some time with you and Paige and as does everybody else. Um, so in closing, let me ask you this, what is on the horizon for World Karaoke Tours Masters Champion? Oh, well, you know, I'm just living day by day. Um, you know, I am 
working with Talent Quest and uh, getting that going again in the Huntsville area. Uh, you know, I'm trying to build uh, some things there in Huntsville since, you know, now I'm not in the ministry or not, you know, connected to the church now. Um, I'm going to do something in the music industry there. Uh, we're playing some music. We're getting to sing a few places. Uh, and we're expanding the karaoke horizons there. So, That's I mean, you know, music promotions is really what we're, what I'm loving doing right now. And well, uh, I've made some really and, great friends. And well, and we were down there visiting just last week and the talent in the Huntsville area is phenomenal. And, and Bob is a part of our business venture, Wheelhouse. And uh, we're going to be doing some coaching and some promotions. I also heard through the grapevine that you are going to be competing in the uh, the Eliminator round, and you are going to try to take a shot at getting that world title. Is that correct? You know, um, I think I would like to give it a try. I think I would be, you know, uh, I think I'd be a pretty good competitor in that, you know. So. Yeah, I think that'd be a, be a lot of fun. Well, I tell you what, we are real interested in seeing that and definitely anything that you do. I'm looking forward to seeing you at Talent Quest. And you're actually here in Columbus right now, so I'm probably going to see you sometime later on today or tomorrow. But having said all that, I couldn't have done these first few shows without having one of my best friends on board with me. And I just want to say from my heart to yours, I love you so much. Uh, you definitely are like family to me, you and Paige. And without a doubt, my friend, oh, I'm actually starting to cry. <laughs> you are one of the most talented individuals I've ever met in my life. And I give God thanks every day for allowing you, um, allowing me the pleasure to meet you guys and have you in my life. I love you so much. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you too. And thank you so much for having us on here. And you're just very kind, you know, <laughs> just, a, just a hillbilly from Missouri. That's all I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a hillbilly from Georgia. I guess that's why we bond so well. I love you so much, brother. I'll see you later. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Thank you. Love you. And just like that, it's time for me to say, bideep, bideep, that's all, folks. I want to have a great moment with you here in just a minute to remind you about what I said in the beginning now about being your own person out there searching for those gigs, the national anthem, all of that stuff. you got to fight for your right to party. All right. I want to say thanks a lot to all of my guests, Miss Nikki Suyama. Loved having some tea with Lee and Crystal. And of course, a big thank you to my friend, Bob Owens, for coming on board for the big interview. And of course, the person with the mostest, Oz himself, World Karaoke Tour's own commissioner, Mr. Whitney John Stewart. Thank you so much. I also want to encourage you guys to reach out to me. Give me some ideas. Let me know, hey, Sissy, I want to share a pretty cool idea with you. 
find me on worldkaraokeetour.com slash backstage. I want to hear from you. Ideas. If you want to be on the show, hit me up. I don't know none of this unless you tell me, so make sure you stay in touch with me. All right. We're going to see you again next week. And remember, all great performances happen on the stage. Everything else happens backstage. I'll see you next week.